Hello, I am Tara. And I'm Jill. Today, we are doing the long-awaited makeup and skincare video. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> finally, finally, finally. But okay. where are we from, do you know? Huh? Where are we from? Living on a dime? Oh yeah, we're from livingonadime.com. <laughs> now all the drama's so, over. Mom and I will both say we were a little shocked when we started doing our videos that everyone started asking us what our makeup routine and stuff is <laughs> because we really don't do anything that special. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we kind of put it off. We're like, yeah, whatever, okay. Well, then we kept having more people ask, more people ask. So we're doing this video. Um, now, I'm going to say a little couple of things up front. And don't let this discourage you from watching the rest of the video because we do have some good tips. But first of all, Mom and I have three things going for us that I think really help with the good skin care to start with. One, genetics. I, I hate to say it, but Grandma has really good skin. Mom has good skin. I have pretty good skin. I think even though one of Ellie has acne, I think hers is pretty good skin normally. But so I, they don't get discouraged. I had acne horribly exactly. and I'm going to talk about that. I was going to say that's something that can be overcome and helped quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And even I don't have huge breakouts, but I have acne all the time and I have found a solution to that that has really helped me also. The second thing is we don't drink alcohol. We don't smoke. And we so don't our, smoke. Our lipstick. Mm -hmm. And I think that smoking and the alcohol really does a number on your skin that people don't realize. Yeah. So those are the two other things that we do. But we're going to give you our specific makeup routine and skincare routine. And mom has several other tips that she's going to show on how to organize and that kind of thing. So I'm going to let mom go first. Okay. Go for it, mom. Um, well, four things really quick, though, kind of along that line is don't compare yourself to others. Take what you have and do the best you can with it. You know what I mean? Um, we all have different features. We all have different things about us that, that are better than other people have. You know, we all have a different something on us that's really beautiful. Like some people have beautiful eyes. Others have beautiful lips. Some have these such gorgeous hair I just kill for you know beautiful thick hair so we all have something so take what you have and make the best of it you know don't just give up and say well I don't have that so I can't but you can always make yourself more attractive a little you know just enhance what you have don't um, don't get overkill a lot of people try to cover up with the makeup to think and think they're getting more attractive the more they coat it on. You want you want the makeup to enhance what you have so that people see you, not for them to see the makeup. Yeah, I if have you, bad news for everyone. That bright that? red 40s lipstick did not look good in the 40s and it still doesn't look good. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, ladies. Well, I wore red the other day with my red top. <laughs> well, it goes good with some things. I shouldn't say it yeah. never goes good, but I see these people trying to enhance with this bright red lipstick, it's like, I know what you're saying, but you see, that's, that's the whole point. You notice their lipstick. You didn't notice them. Mm -hmm. What makeup's supposed to do is help people notice you and not, you know, the makeup. So yeah. first, so don't compare. Another thing is always buy, to save money, always buy your makeup at places where you can take it back if you need to. Ask them before you get it, is this refundable? You know, if the color doesn't work, can I bring this back? If this doesn't work, can I bring it back? Walgreens and Walmart, I usually get mine mostly at Walmart, are great about this. The other thing to save money on the makeup is to use... Oh, excuse uh, me on that point. <clears throat> I take it back a lot. I do too. I, I do too. Whenever I, I, let's say I want to try a new lipstick, I will go through five lipsticks mm -hmm. before... I find something I really like, but you can't when I like tell it, cool. then Go I ahead. take it, you know, so, but I do use that policy and okay. Don't email me. It's not like I'm returning $50 worth of makeup every week to Walmart. I do this once a year with maybe, you know, $15 worth of makeup, but then I end up buying more. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's that policy and I use it and I don't feel bad about using it. No, and it has to be that way because you can't tell what the color looks like 
by just picking it out at the store. And I think they're a little more lenient for that type of thing in the makeup departments because they understand that. And the cosmetic companies understand that. Mm -hmm that that's just a given for that type of business. And you can go to the department store like Macy's and have a, you know, a facial done and that kind of thing. But it's like 45 bucks for a bottle of foundation. Mm -hmm. And if you're living on a dime, you ain't going to be able to afford 45 bucks worth of foundation. So no, no. And so the other thing to save money is use less. We learned this in Mary Kay first thing off the bat that it helped us because we sold more product because of it, but it's very expensive for the person buying it. And if you put like lotion on and put, put a really, really thin coat of lotion on or whatever you use, put very thin cream on, you don't need to put it a quarter inch thick. The thin coat works just as well and does exactly what needs to be done as a quarter of an inch. And I have product that lasts me probably, I, my product always lasts double to triple what they normally mm -hmm. say that most people use it for. Yeah. So like this blush that I have here where it's falling apart that I'm going to show her later, I've had this for like two years. Mm -hmm. And I know we're yeah. going to get comments, oh, bacteria, bacteria. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I don't have a problem with bacteria. So yeah, I'm going to addre address yeah. that too. Yeah, I'm doing the makeup. I've had this and I love this color, which is why I'm not getting rid of it until it's gone. Mm -hmm. But I don't pile it on either. Yeah. And so it, your creams, just do it thin. Don't just cake it on and do it thick. And you can really save. If you think about it, I, you can you, know, you can think of it this way. I use it. I spend, let's say I pay, spend $20 on a thing of makeup of some sort or all my makeup. And it's supposed to last me six months, but it lasts me a year and a half. So technically, I have saved $40 because I've stretched that $20 makeup out yeah. to a year and a half. Yeah, like I put a thin, and we live in Colorado. It is extremely dry in Colorado, extremely. And we're not quite as bad as Arizona, but we're dry. And this small bottle of moisturizer I've had over a year, and it's still like half full. Yeah. Because you yeah. just so put you, a thin layer on. You don't need yeah. to drown yourself. So think small on your uh, makeup, you know, um, I mean, use less, think less and give your makeup a chance. Whatever product you're trying, don't put the wrinkle cream on that night and wake up the next morning and say, oh, well, my wrinkles are still here. You know, it takes time for a lot of these products to work. So you need to give them a fair chance, three weeks, four weeks at and even if six weeks, if you can, to give them time to start working. Now, that doesn't mean if you put something on and you wake up the next morning and you have hives all over your face and a big rash that you're supposed to give it a try for six weeks. You know, that's a little different story. But, you know, you need to give the, the stuff, well, I'm this is supposed to control, control the oil on my face. Well, you've got to give it time because your body has to readjust to what the, the cream is doing. And, and that type of thing. Now, I was going to show them really fast first, if that's okay, Tara. I, I do not put my makeup anymore on in the bathroom. Changed my life. I mean, who would think it would change my life? I have a small vanity. Actually, it's an old desk Tara had. I think you got it for nothing, and you were going to get rid of it when I you think moved. I dumpster dived it. Yeah. And it's a desk, it's kind of a curvy little desk, but it's got just the narrow drawer where you put the paper clips usually for the stuff, and then it has three drawers on the side, deeper drawers. I slapped some white paint on it to make it, and put some pink colored, I had some crystal pink colored um, handles I just had, had from something else that I put on this silly vanity. And then I needed a mirror. Well, the vanity's in front of windows, and I couldn't figure out, I had no place to hang it really well, a mirror somehow, but I had this old clunky mirror that was in the house when I moved into this house. It was so heavy, I couldn't put it on the wall, and it was only about this wide. So I set that mirror back behind that desk and kind of leaned it against the windowsill. So now I've got a mirror above my vanity. Well, it was just a plain square glass, no decorative frame or anything. So then I took an, an old picture, gilded picture frame 
and just leaned it in front of that mirror on top of that. So I've got a really cute little vanity thing set up in there. I've got a stool I found for 45 cents that I recovered at the DA, from the DAV. And so that's my vanity in my spare bedroom. And that's where I put my makeup on. Why I like the vanity is one, with my chronic fatigue, I can sit down and put my makeup on. It is so relaxing to be blow drying my hair and just sitting there, blow drying it instead of standing and doing that. Two, I don't have this problem, but like at Tara's house, you need to keep the bathroom free for people who have to have showers or to brush their teeth, stuff like that. By me doing my makeup in the bedroom, that leaves the bathroom free. You don't have to buy a house with four bathrooms, you know, if you can have six girls, because using the vanity that clears up the bathroom space a whole lot so you can save money doing that and then the other thing i noticed i would get hair everywhere my hair just falls out and it was just like all over the bathroom sink you know the the makeup was all over the bathroom sink and i'm not sure where it goes now i was gonna say but, where's it going i don't know it it goes on the floor but it's so much easier for me just to vacuum over the floor than to try to wipe down the sink you know and wipe down the counters it's much easier just to run the vacuum over the floor and so i really i spend less time cleaning for some reason and i think i'm just a little more careful too, when I'm sitting there putting my makeup on. So I have my little narrow drawer. It's real, only about three, four inches deep. And what I do is, I don't know, can you see this, Tara? Yep. Okay, I have this tray. I actually, it's got the price on it. It was 45 cents I got at the thrift store. And this is basically what I keep my makeup uh, for. And it fits my comb and my brush can go in here. My other brushes can go along here. Then I have places for clips and that type of thing in here. So that's where I keep all of my makeup. And this is actually all I use. I have a little section about a three inch empty space along this, this here little um, tray that I put a couple of jars of creams that I have. And I put all that goes right in the drawer. Then the one other thing, and I got this for a quarter at the thrift store. Then I keep this sitting on top of my vanity. It's got my mm -hmm. lipsticks that I use, uh, you know, all the time, every day. I've got those in there, my lip pencils. And then this here's my hair clips that I use every day, all the time. And it's real handy. I just have it sitting there. And if I need a hair clip, I just run in and grab it off my vanity. It, it keeps everything together. It doesn't look bad, you know, really. It doesn't look junky or anything. So part of that is look at different places. Look in the uh, this office supply section of your thrift store, and you can get some really good trays. I like these because I see so many people with these baskets or the makeup bags or even just a regular drawer, and they're digging and digging and digging all the time. I would, I can put my makeup in on them five minutes or less if I have to because I don't have to dig for anything I just grab it it's right there yeah, it takes me like three or four minutes I yeah mean, well I'm not, just including my hair yeah, yeah it takes me three to four minutes to put on my makeup like a minute or two to curl my hair these people who spend an hour in the bathroom I'm like what are you doing <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and I understand some hairstyles are a lot more complicated, and I am not willing to spend the time spending an hour well, on my that's, hair. Well, that's another thing, too. If you find stress in your life and you're too busy, you need to find a hairstyle that's mm -hmm. very, very simple. I had to find a hairstyle that didn't cost anything, you know, that was inexpensive because I didn't have the money to do it. And so it is doable. Now, for doing my um, skincare stuff, I was a Mary Kay consultant, so I do know a little bit about the different stuff on makeup. And I think I'll just go through what I used. When I started doing Mary Kay, uh, I was covered with acne. I was in my middle 30s, and or to middle to late 30s, something like that. And I had lived with acne all the time. And Mary Kay was the the skincare line that I finally found out that helped me. And there's a couple of things that I'll touch on that really made a difference. It wasn't even so much the, the Mary Kay line, but it was a couple of things I learned during Mary Kay that helped me with my acne. And Tara's right. Part of it is your genes. When Tara was born, 
she was, I wasn't that way. My baby pictures, I'm red and wrinkly and yucky. When Tara was born, I have never seen a baby. And it wasn't because she was mine. I would stand at the nursery window when she was born and people say, look at that baby. They really said that. I know, you can, you can pat yourself on the back. I but can't they, lift my arm. Comment how oh. pretty she was because she, when she was born, it was like she was a six month old or something. Her face was just totally smooth. It was the most beautiful color you ever saw. It didn't have a lot of the little wrinkles or the red bumps and stuff that a lot of newborns had. She had perfect skin at that time. Another thing that helped her, and you can yawn, go for it. <laughs> we have chronic fatigue syndrome, so we're chronically fatigued. When I sit down, I start yawning. Sorry, guys. Another thing, I started doing Mary Kay when she was about 14 or so around that age and she didn't wasn't allowed to wear full-fledged makeup until she was 16 but I did let her wear a little bit of lip gloss once in a while for something special and just a couple of little tiny things nothing much but you know the lip gloss and that until before she was 16 but I showed her when I was doing the Mary Kay and this really helped her the responsible way to use it how to use the products how to enhance her best features so Show you need the to do girls it. how to put on the makeup take that if you need to take them to Macy's and have them do a facial or go to a Mary Kay consultant and do a facial because I think a lot of times moms just say okay here well whatever but or the girls learn from other girls at school yeah. you know <laughs> which is kind of can be kind of scary yeah. and I even took like my granddaughters one time for their was it their sixth birth sixth grade when they were uh, what 12 yeah. 11 or 12 I think birthday mm -hmm. for the special thing treat for them I took them to the beauty college they were about 12 I think it was Easter and their birthday it was kind of all something mm -hmm. special in there and I took them to the beauty college and I had let them have their hair done and makeup done and the girls just loved that and they felt beautiful and even though they were little that was just kind of like a special mm -hmm. little thing it gave them a sense of how to look nice and it helped and I would have them over for a tea party and then we would take and put makeup on I'd show them how to do the makeup and I would walk them through step by step skin care care is the most important even above makeup if you can't do anything else at least do skin care and um, it's like they always would tell us that if you have a, a roughed up ugly old canvas to work with and you go slap and makeup on, you know, the picture is not going to turn out as well. So mm -hmm. do the skin care first. Now, I, um, oh, I just drew a blank. I forgot what I was going to say. But I'm going to uh, show you, go walk you through the steps of what I use for a basic routine. And first of all, I don't, a lot of times they say wash your face in the morning, put your makeup on, and then at night before you go to bed, take your makeup off. I don't do that. I wash my face at night and take all my makeup off. And I don't wash it in the morning when yes, I get up. I do the I, same. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think we overkill on washing our skin. We mm -hmm. just do too, it, we're too harsh on it. There's no reason to wash it in the morning. If you don't, no. if you have your, the more important thing People do not realize it is super, super important to get your makeup off at night. That's at night. what causes the blemishes and all of that kind of stuff. And I never, ever, 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 ever have gone to bed with my makeup on. I always take it off before I go to bed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't care how and sick and how tired I am, I get my makeup off. Yeah, I do too. And um, so I use, I laugh at these, I watch on TV, you know, how they sell the beauty products and, okay, here's our cleanser. If you use this cleanser, it's going to get take care of fine lines and wrinkles. It's going to soften your skin and give you more elasticity. So then they, this is the cleanser. So then they move on to the, and here's some moisturizer. It's going to get rid of fine lines and wrinkles and get, you know, you make your skin softer and give you the glow and even out the skin tones. And then here's our night cream and that's going to get rid of the wrinkles. And I'm thinking, okay, if the first thing, the cleanser got rid of all those wrinkles and that, why are you needing these other products? 
you know, that never made sense to me. If the first product was doing what it said it was supposed to do, you shouldn't have to have 25 other products to accomplish the what the first one and the second and third were supposed to do. And so I got I got to thinking about that after a while. So what I do to save money, now let me backtrack. I don't want to disappoint you guys because I know a lot of you have been wanting to watch this and I will touch on this a little bit because you're gonna you're wanting me to tell you about how I use all these wonderful homemade cleansers and homemade <laughs> beauty products that you know yeah, the, don't work that all this stuff to be honest I used apple cider vinegar for 25 years about 20 years something like that and up until I was 35 I drowned myself in apple cider vinegar I put it in it my cures hair everything, though. I put it on my face. I put it on my, took, I took baths where I just soaked in this stuff. I drank it because it was supposed to make me lose weight. Didn't lose a pound. Didn't lose one pound. My acne just almost got worse, but I kept using it. Here's one of those things, you know, I always talk about if it's not working, change it. Duh. I didn't do know that at that time. And I would splash the apple cider vinegar and I just did everything with it. It didn't work. And so then I, oh, the lemon juice on the hair to lighten the hair. You know, I, I would squeeze lemon juice and I had to sit out in the, the sun for 30 minutes with lemon juice on my hair. Well, I found out after a while, if I just sat out in the sun for 30 minutes, my hair would bleach out. I didn't have to even bother with the lemon juice. Mm -hmm. So there's, all, oh, oh, the one I liked the best was the tea bags on the eyes. <laughs> to get rid of the puffiness. Okay, it's supposed to get rid of dark circles and puffiness. So I took two tea bags and you know that I'd used and I put them in the freezer. So I pulled them out and I'm laying for like 20 minutes with these and I thought I was going to all the puffiness would be gone and beauty would set in. And I go look in the mirror and I had these two black raccoon eyes where the tea bags had laid. It had stained, the tea had stained my skin. <laughs> and I thought, this didn't work. You know what I don't understand about the whole uh, face, ma eye masks and cucumbers and all that? Just take some ice in a baggie and put it on your <laughs> eyes. It's All you it know, is is the cold bringing uh, down the swelling. Yeah, exactly. This isn't rocket science. <laughs> Like if you have swelling on any other part of your body. So we make this so, com we do these fancy mayonnaise masks and avocado masks and egg masks, you know. And, and you know, sometimes your skin does feel kind of smooth because you've had something on it to clean it off. But the reality is you don't need to put quite so much work and effort into this stuff. And I'll be honest, if you look at, for years, my generation was using, we did a lot of the natural products. It was in the 60s, you know, and we were flowing and all this. So we went back to nature and we used alfalfa sprouts in our hair for something. I don't know. We were doing all these weird things. But if you look at it, it didn't work. None of it works. So give us about 10 years into when we start all getting older into our 30s, we figured out this stuff didn't work. And so we're high telling it to the process chemical peels and everything else we can find because we're getting into our older age now and so let's pour it on with this heavy duty chemical stuff because that's the only thing that was helping at that point yeah. but if you look at those pictures from the 1890s and 1905 you know all those pictures of the women they all used natural products and they all look like they were 75 or 80 by the time they were 40. yeah to me, that's the true reality check. Yeah, and part of that is because nowadays we have sunscreen in our makeups, which really helps. But that's yeah. not a natural product. And yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, it, it can be. You can use zinc for sunscreen, but you know, you're not going to rub white zinc all over your face and go out <laughs> in public. So, you know, back then, yeah. they didn't have the stuff to put on they were all natural because they just didn't have it yeah and so. you better believe if they had the stuff we had now they'd be all over it i'm sure yeah. so so what i use um i use the 
off-brand oil of Olay cleanser. You know, I was talking about if the first product works, you don't need all those. This is this is what I decided to go cheap with mm -hmm. because it doesn't cost but just a couple, two to three dollars. I think it's not very much. It's right next to the oil of Olay, or usually it's on the bottom shelf. It's just the Walmart brand. Yeah. Age you see that? Okay, I didn't know. Classic cleanser. Yeah. It's nothing, I'm not too fussy about my cleansers. Now, I had some sweet lady send me, I was so excited to get it, a whole bunch of Mary Kay, and I just love, I still use it, you know, when I have it, but it's too expensive, the reality is, so this is what I use most of the time. And it works really good. I also, um, by using this, this has some little beads kind of in it, and so it exfoliates for me, which I like. Because I, I'm a big believer in, I actually do like using masks, but they're a little bit expensive, so I don't use them still. But if I had a treat, that's what I would do is mask. If you have oily skin, though, the secret to the mask is, well, before I get to the mask, let me say, this cleanser takes everything off. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't have to have special makeup pads to remove makeup, a special this for that to remove eye makeup, and this removes your regular removes your regular makeup. If your cleanser is not taking everything off, you need to change cleansers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you should not different. have a separate eye remover makeup. You don't no. need it. You just close your eyes, and the soap won't get in your eyes. Mm -hmm. Bottom well, line. Well, and is, I have a solution for that actually with my cleanser, which I'll go into after you're done. Oh, okay. And so you don't need, that narrows the price down by just using one basic cleanser. Then on the mask, if you have oily skin, I used a clay mask. Uh, that absorbs the oil in your skin. You got the clay mask. Yeah, and that I really love. Where'd you get that? I didn't know you had some clay mask. I was wanting some. Oh, I have a whole bunch of this. I use it in my soap for my soap now, but yeah. Oh. Here I'll, I need. I'll, I'll leave a link in the description below where I get it, but I'll just give you some. Mom. You'll give me some. I Thank will. you. Well, two now. At one point, I couldn't afford to buy the clay mask, but if you go to a health food store, they had big, like two-pound bags of just clay, powdered clay, and I used that for a while for a mask, and it was much, much cheaper than a technical mask. So you can save money doing that way. So I just cleanse at night with my cleanser. And if I have the mask, then twice a week I use a mask, which is really nice if you can. Then my my routine's gonna be different from Tara's, and I use different products than Tara's. And I want you to hear that because you need to experiment with these things. And if our stuff doesn't work for you, try something else till you find what does. And, and Tara and I use two different types of things. This stuff, because of my ancient age and being elderly, <laughs> I would take a bath in this stuff. I mean, I love this stuff. It's a serum. What a serum does is it actually tightens your skin and tightens up the wrinkles. Is one of the main jobs of a serum. So when you're over a certain age, tar doesn't really need a serum yet, but when you get over a certain age, if you're thinking of, well, I need more creams, get rid of my wrinkles or that, actually the serums do the best for taking care of creams. Now this here, oh, my bottle's all dirty. I'm sorry, guys, but I just used it this morning. This product that I use is called Amazon. It's a capital M period, capital A, small S-A-M. I got mine off of HSN because I watch for it twice a year. It goes on sale, and then I get a ten dollar coupon off, and that's what I usually get mine. And it's really not too bad because I think I paid thirty dollars, and I had the ten dollar coupon off. Maybe I don't can't remember because I don't I'll buy these. A lot of times I'll have Tara or my mom buy them for my gifts, so I don't even put money in and I got two bottles of this this will last me about eight months and so two bottles for just a little bit over twenty dollars for uh, a year and a half worth of supply that's really not too bad you know for expense for makeup so I use this after I cleanse in the morning I mean at night 
And then when I get up in the morning, I use this again. Then at night, I use this serum first, cleanse, serum, and then I put this on at night. And it's the same company, M period A S A M, Amazon. And I use the Vino Lift in their line. And it's just a cold cream, basically a cream. And I use that at night. What does it then do? Then in the for morning. You? What does it do for you? This is for dry skin. And I sometimes I'll just use this at night. Because my skin is not that dry living here in Kansas and I've never had super dry skin but if you had super dry you might have to use it it's just for dry skin this is for wrinkles and glow oh, this you're is glowing for, mom I know. and this is for dry skin now in the morning I put on the serum uh, like I said I take a bath in this all day long if I could but I put on the serum then I take and I just use my foundation. I still use Mary Kay foundation. I've tried so many. The mousse that you use, that worked pretty good. But I could get Mary Kay, this was $3 at the thrift store. Brand new, still in the package. So that's really cheap for you know, a tube of foundation that'll last me about eight months, maybe almost a year. Mm -hmm. and, and so I really like it. So I got this for $3. So after I put my serum on, I put my foundation. Now, if I'm going, if you don't panic, this is going to be complicated a little bit, but you could go and rewatch this again. If I'm going someplace very, very special, like church or some special occasion, I use this stuff. This is basically a primer. And it's by the M period ASAM Amazon people too. I haven't tried any other types of primers. I'm sure they probably all work pretty good. And this just moves things out, fills in the wrinkles, and then you put your foundation on top of that. I never use sunscreen. My found, I usually try to get a foundation that has sunscreen in it because by the time I layer my creams, sometimes put the primer on and then I put foundation on with, with sunscreen, I'm pretty well covered, literally covered. And I would rather, and if you're... <laughs> That's why you look so beautiful, Mom. <laughs> I, know. I know. It's all camouflage, isn't it? <clears throat> Now, you may say, well, I'm just going to get sunscreen and put sunscreen on in the morning. I don't want to use foundation. Don't. Sunscreen stinks. Don't do that to your family. <laughs> yeah, it's oily. Why not put something on that's going to enhance your skin, even it out, and make it look nicer? Mm -hmm. And just put some foundation on with sunscreen. So I use, I put makeup on every morning for protection, not just beauty. <laughs> it's so beautiful. Then, after I put the foundation on, I do blush, put blush. Okay, what I do for blush is kind of interesting. <laughs> I Ellie gave this to me. She dug through, minimalized. That is so funny. Bit. Look what I have. Oh, you're kidding. <laughs> <laughs> she gave me that one, too. She didn't want <laughs> <laughs> she cleaned out her room and she gave me a whole bag of makeup so I brought this home well it's lip gloss okay now I'm talking about blush here but I brought this home and I thought I was I have I've had a hard time finding a good shade of blush that I like really well as a matter of fact I like yours I should have checked yours out so I got this this here um, lip gloss she sent me and I thought wonder what this would look like on my cheeks so I used it on my cheeks and I loved it. I just loved it. There's nothing wrong with using cheapy. Well, and here's a tip. To make you look finished, 
You need to That's match your blush to your lipstick. And I used to just use my lipstick for both my blush and my lipstick. I was just getting ready to say that. So if something, if you look at your face and you can't quite figure something's wrong with it, but you don't know what it is, the chances are your blush has a different undertone than your lips do. So try using the same thing for your lips and your blush. If you're going to have plum blush, you need to have plum lipstick. If you're going to have pink blush, have pink lipstick. If you're going to have red blush, have red mm -hmm. lipstick. If you're going to have brown blush, have brown lipstick. As a general kind of, you know, rule, so to speak. Yeah. So I use this, I can use this for my lip gloss on my cheeks. Now what's interesting was before I got this, this is blush I bought. And I was using it and it didn't quite, I don't know, the shade just wasn't quite, it's e.l.f. This is e.l.f. brand. It was just like a dollar. I got it just, the same one. <laughs> I can't believe you were doing this. We really don't know what the other one uses. And so I got this for my blush. Well, I did quite like it. And one day, I don't know what made me do it. I think I put the blush on. I thought, well, maybe if I did the same on my lips with it, it would look okay. So I put this on my lips. You usually don't, you usually do it the other way around, you know. But to put blush on your lips, most people don't do that. And I put this silly stuff on my lips, and I tell you, this was the most moisturizing stuff I've ever put on my lips. And I now use this for lip gloss instead of blush. Mm -hmm. So save some of those products. You don't need to throw them all out if they don't work for blush or whatever. You can, you know, mix, mix and match. Now, another tip, if I'm going, like today, because we're doing like six, seven, eight hours worth of videos, my, we've already, we're already like four hours in since I put my makeup on, and it is just fading, you know. It, it can fade pretty good, especially under these lights. So when you're having something special and you need your blush to stay on, what I do is I use the cream or blush, and I put that down first. And don't get carried away. You don't want to look like a clown. You do a light coat, light, light hand on all of these. Then I put powder blush on, on top of the cream blush. Because once the powder wears off, then I still have that little bit of the cream blush. And so it keeps your makeup lasting quite a bit longer when you do that. Now, after I've got the blush and that all on, I take and put, always use this, powder. I use loose powder. It doesn't necessarily have to be loose powder. I use loose powder, and you go over everything. I usually use something that's kind of translucent or a little bit lighter. It doesn't really matter. You don't want anything too, too dark. Uh, if you're light-skinned, if you're dark-skinned, then, of course, you want something darker. But I just yeah, do a lot. Yeah, don't ivory if you have dark skin. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's not what we're skin. saying, guys. No, match your skin tone <laughs> on all these things. And so, well, and another thing, too, when I put the foundation on my lips, or put my foundation on, make sure you get it on your lips, because I'll tell you why in a minute. And then I put the powder on, I put that on, too, on my lips. And this was, I had these makeup brushes years ago all the makeup brushes were like six feet long mm -hmm. and you have to pack them in your big suitcase because they were so huge and i told it wasn't working i know i keep sounding like a broken record but i could not ever get my makeup brush to fit in my makeup bag so i finally told my son i said will you chop this off and he did and he cut it down he even took the little knob that was on the top of it pulled it off and and pressed it on so it what if it's perfect in my makeup bag so you can cut cut your makeup brushes now now you can find small ones yeah i just found a small one and yeah it was nice thankfully as a matter of fact i got a little one that looks like a lipstick case mm -hmm. and you pull the lid off and a fluffy brush pops out so you can find them easier now back then you couldn't but you know if you have to chop the silly thing off and to make it fit for whatever you need it for so now I've got the powder all on. Now I'm doing my eyes. And on your eyes, I'm not missing anything so far, have I? I don't think. I think so. on, on your eyes, 
I'm older. If you're my age, sometimes putting a lot of mascara on the lower lashes isn't so good. It makes you look older or something. But first of all, I will use eyeliner. And I always use, I think I need a bigger eyeliner stick, don't you? It's <laughs> I've used this for like, I don't know, five or six years. I know. I have to throw mine out because they just... Well, that's another thing about the bacteria. You know, you can't, they say you got to get rid of this or that after three months. I'm sorry, the factories or the companies are getting you to do that so you can buy more. Eyeliners, powdered br blush, now, anything dry. The exception to that is if you have an eye infection, that it, is totally different than throw out your mascara and your eyeliner and your eyeshadow if you have an eye infection. But mm -hmm. most people don't get infections every day. Now, yeah, so if you have an infection, you know, of course you need to use common sense here. But if it's something dry like a pencil or a lip pencil, eyeliner pencil, it's not moist. There's nothing. You are the only one using it, and it's perfectly safe. The only time I've ever had, if, if the makeup is moist and wet, you know, after like three years it might start getting something. The only time I've ever known anybody to have a problem was a Mary Kay consultant that I was working with. She'd had her foundation for five years and she said my face is starting to break out a little bit and I told her I think you probably have to change the makeup and sure enough she got fresh foundation and it helped. Now so, I will say on that same line, I was going to talk about this later but I'll just talk about it now. Um, I have had two or three times where all of a sudden I just start getting acne all over my face when I haven't had it for years and I just keep breaking out. I'm like, what is wrong? And if that happens, I do replace my foundation and get a new one yes. because something has gotten in there and I know that's the problem. Mm -hmm. And so just listen to your skin. But this replacing stuff every three months is for the birds. You don't yeah. need to do that. That's what I was going to say. The sure indication that something you might need to change is if you start breaking out mm -hmm. unusual where you don't normally, you know, break out on it and stuff. So now I use navy blue eyeliner. Most people use black, but it makes you look harsh, especially mm -hmm. if you put it on good and dark and thick. And... You don't want to look harsh. I'm sorry, ladies. I know this is the day of women's lib, and we're strong and powerful and all this. Oh, but don't get me started. Guys oh, no. I like feel it like coming. Their, their guys like their women to look, have a soft look about them. I'm sorry. This is human nature. You can fight it all you want. They want their women to look soft. And black, hard-lined eyes just I don't know, is BJ still there? Ask him if that's attractive to him. Most guys, you know, they don't want this harsh, hard look. Mm. They want a softness. That's why we wear curls and have soft hairdos. Mm. They like that. Well, the navy, by using the dark navy blue eyeliner, Sorry. I'm saying just pause for you. Sorry. <laughs> the eyeliner is... It's, it's much softer and less harsh looking than black. Mm -hmm. Also, if you have bloodshot eyes, like we're sick, my eyes, I, get, I woke up this morning, I looked in the mirror and I thought, how are you gonna pull this one together today? You know, I mean, it really looked rough. But if your eyes are bloodshot because you're tired or sick or something, the navy, for some reason, reflects on those red eyes and it makes them look less red. I don't quite know what it does to the redness, but for, it must be something where it's blue and red on the color wheel. Somehow it it makes the redness not quite as strong in your eyes. And so that helps. Turns your eyes visible. purple. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you smart? <laughs> so, you know, be sure you use the navy <laughs> eyeliner when you can. My daughter being smart with me. Yeah. Now then I use mascara I'm having a real rough one with mascara I used to use Mary Kate bar none I would that was one yeah, place I don't I, like it anymore I don't like the Mary Kay anymore so I <clears throat> my 
niece, my niece, my granddaughter told me about this one. It's called, I think it's Maybelline. I don't have my glasses on. Maybelline. And it's called Stiletto. Yeah. Is what it is. You know, it's okay. Um, it's better than most other ones I've tried. It's not still as good as the old Mary Kay used to be, but it's, you know, I do it a little bit. Now, that's another thing. Especially when you get older, I use the brown. I prefer brown, but brown black is even better for uh, mascara because it once again is a softer look than the just harsh black. So if you can go brown black, it's hard to find a brown black m mascara though. So you know, like I've got black on now. But if you can, another thing when I do my mascara, I don't ever use an eye curler eyelash curler there's all of a sudden they start coming up with these new mascara brushes and guess what they're bent well 25 years ago or more I learned this when I was doing the Mary Kay you can take any this is a regular mascara brush and I just pull it out when I pull it out of the tube I just gently bend it against the edge of the the, the tube and it naturally bends it just gently do it so then when I put my mascara in, I have this curve in there, and I'll just pull it up and kind of hold it for just a second, and then I go on to the other side and do it and hold it, and then I do once more. Sometimes you can brush a little pow loose powder if you want, if you're going out for the evening, and then rebrush with more mascara, and that helps keep it on a little bit and makes them a little bit longer. But I don't have to use a curling, one of those crunchy curling things because I, it's amazing what this little curve in the brush will do. Now this brush is an old one that I just washed out and I use it to brush my eyebrows. For my eyebrows now, I have dark eyebrows. I'm, I'm a natural blonde, but I have very dark eyebrows. But you still need to sometimes use an eyebrow pencil. And I use a blonde one, and most people can use a blonde one. Because it just fills in these just, you don't even realize you have these little open spaces in your eyebrows sometimes. And it just kind of smooths it all together. I don't use the eyebrows all the time, just for special occasions that I do that. And, oh, eyeshadow. I should have done this first because I put my eyeshadow on, of course, before I do my mascara. I look, I... No, if you have, how do I say this? If you have powdered, the little powdered pa palettes of eyeshadow, wet it. Wet eyeshadow will stay on mm -hmm. a gazillion times longer yeah. than just the powder I stuff. I don't like dry eyeshadow at all. And you can buy powder, you mm -hmm. know, the dry stuff and wet it with your brush. And use a little brush like this and always... Wet it, just wet the brush and put a little bit, wet the brush and, and stir it a little bit, and then start in the corner of your eye and brush it on. And then after you dab it on just in the corner of your eye, take a brush like this. Does that show up? Mm -hmm. And then pull it away from the corner of your eye and brush the rest of the shadow, you know, across the rest of your lid. You need, want the darkest part on the edge here because that does something to uplift, enhance the high eye, brighten it, or whatever. And then you want to, just like any artist's palette, you'll see a lot of people that are uh, drawing a flower, and they say, put the heavy paint here, and then they kind of just stroke it in lightly. You're doing the same thing with your eye. And so that's when you put the eyeshadow on is what you do. Um, I think that covers the makeup. Do I have time to real quick to do just a couple more things? Mm -hmm. Because I was going to tell everybody, I do use baking soda most of the time on my hair for shampoo. Mm -hmm. uh, that Oh, I know the most important thing. Well, say on the baking soda first. Okay. I do baking soda on my hair. That's all I use. I don't even use cider vinegar on it anymore because it, it I have oily hair and it would just weight it down. And uh, we have a whole thing on the website that they can go learn about the mm -hmm. uh, baking soda. It's it one of our most popular articles. It is. Yeah. And you, now, Tar doesn't use it. You have to try it and see. Amazing amount of people are using it now, and yeah. it works great. A lot so of people I really say, like it. Yes, try it because I save so much money. I got something to say about this. Sorry.
I know we're gonna get the hairdressers saying, oh, the pH is gonna, oh, the pH, oh, the pH. <laughs> I don't care. If my hair looks good and it's not breaking off, I'm gonna and use not, it. And it's not that falling out. That is a bunch of a... baloney to sell you a bunch of product that you don't need at the store. Mm -hmm. So, all you hairdressers that are going to be leaving comments, I don't fall for it. I'm sorry. Mom's hair is gorgeous. She has used baking soda for the last, what, 10 years probably it's been? Uh-huh. It's perfectly fine. It doesn't work for me, but her and hundreds of thousands of other people who have read that article on our website swear by it and love it. And I'm not going to listen to that. I'm sorry. So anyway. Well, it's funny because there's a very expensive shampoo they sell on QVC. And they talk about the pH and all the natural ingredient stuff and everything. And we, I don't know how many people have commented on our website that they have used that expensive shampoo for years. And they went over the baking soda and their hair was even better. Yeah. So... You know, I say I don't use natural products. This is one natural. Th I mix and match. Yeah. You have to try what's going to work for you. It yeah. just, just because it's natural doesn't mean it's going to work. And just because it's chemical doesn't mean it won't work. You know, mm -hmm. you just kind of fix, figure out what works for you. And so, so that's what I always found interesting. But the thing I was going to tell you about that helped me, that I started out the whole thing about... Well, help me remember this, and I'll finish up with the hair and stuff. When I take my shower, stop taking so many showers, but people, um, I use on my skin in the shower, I soap all down, rinse off, and then I keep a bottle of olive oil in there. And while the shower's still running, I rub olive oil all over my body and kind of just do a one-time turn under the water, turn the water off, dry off with the towel, and that works. I found that to work so good for me. You could use baby oil. I did use baby oil for a while. Basically, oil is oil, you know, both of them. Well, now they sell those expensive in-the-shower lotions. Well, what's so funny was I've been doing this for several years now this way, and my skin is so soft. There's not – a lot of times you'll put the – olive oil or the baby oil after you get out of the shower and it leaves a greasy you know kind of film type thing on you but by doing it when you're in the shower and letting the water and then rub off with the towel you don't have that greasy oily film it's just soft yeah. but now they're coming up with this new thing it's called moisturizer in the shower I'm laughing because you know if I told people about this a few years ago they would have just rolled their eyes that, that this wouldn't work but um, mm -hmm. now that's a big thing but the main thing I want to if we do nothing else on the makeup that I learned for my skin above all else was when I started doing the Mary Kay I had acne and the oil just dripped you know your people do the oil pads and the tissues trying to get the oil off their face type of thing what helped me was I had oil control moisturizer, oil control moisturizer that I put on. You're thinking, oh, I don't want to put more oil on my face. No, moisturizer is not oil. It's a different thing. It's not a cream. It's moisturizer, and it had oil control. Then on top of that, I put oil control foundation. Now, those there's a difference between oil-free and oil control and this is why I wanted to tell everybody this just because it's oil free does not mean it's oil control it's hard to find oil control products but if you can and if you have acne there is something about using and you have to use both of them you can't just use the foundation or the moisturizer you have to use them both together for extreme you know acne and that's what cleared me up but that's what I wanted to make everybody know on the foundation. That changed my whole life when I, you know, figured out to do that. <clears throat> but take care of your skin. Stop showering 25 times a day, you know. You can use less product in that and that type of thing and save a huge amount of money. Use the baking soda on your hair if it works for you. Don't be afraid of it. Everybody says, well, can I do it with this or what if I do this? 
it's baking soda. You, you can drink it. You can put it in your body to eat it. It's not going to do anything funky to your hair. It's just baking soda. So don't be afraid to just try it a few times. And usually you have to try it for a couple of weeks to get your, it balances out the oils in your hair is what it does. And so you have to give it a little bit of time, about three weeks or something, for it to get the balance going. So anyway, that's my makeup routine. Now I want to hear about yours. Well, so here's the deal. We've been going quite a while. So I think mm -hmm. we're going to stop mom's makeup routine and then we're going to come back and do mine. <laughs> Which, <laughs> mine is different in some ways and the same in some ways. So, But I do have a couple of products that might help you a little bit too. So visit us at livingonadime.com. Mom's poo-free shampoo is on... How she does it is on there. We'll put a link in the description below. And please like, share, comment. Give us thumbs up if you guys like these videos. Um, and comment. Nice comments. <laughs> Not any snarky stuff. Um, I'll just delete it anyway. So you can waste your time writing it, but I'll just delete it. Um, and we are going to come back and do my makeup routine for the next episode. So visit us at livingonadime.com.